Today I'm going to be installing Rough Country's 4-inch suspension lift kit on our 2012 F-150. This Rough Country kit is for the owner that wants to go from their stock ride height to a more extreme lifted option. That's going to allow you to fit up to 35-inch tires. It's going to make you more capable off-road with that ground clearance. And it's also going to remove that factory rake stance that not many people are fond of. All of the hardware is designed to meet or exceed OEM standards. Rough Country includes a set of rear shock absorbers that are going to provide better control on-road as well as comfort when you're driving over obstacles on the trails. Just under 950 bucks is a great price for a lift kit of this type. Most of our other lifts of this size start at $1,000 and they go up from there. All of the hardware is included to make this install as easy as possible, but I'm going to be giving this two out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. It's just a little bit more involved than a typical lift kit, so expect about a full day's work. With that being said, let's get started with the install. Now with the truck in the air or on jack and jack stands, we took our tires off and our first step is going to be to remove the skid plate with our 13 millimeter socket. Now, with our skid plate removed, we have access to our two plugs for our electric power assisting steering. You just have to pull back the red tabs and then pull out the plugs. With our electronic power steering unplugged, we're going to remove the tie rod end with a 21 millimeter socket. With our nut off, we're going to take a hammer and we're going to separate. And now we're going to unbolt the brackets for our lines. There's a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter. Next, we're going to move the vacuum line from the hub. Just grab and then pull out. Now we're going to move the bolts here and here, 21 millimeter sockets to remove the caliper from the hub. Take your caliper. Now with our caliper gone, we could pull off our rotor and then we're going to remove the dust shield underneath. We're going to remove these bolts with an 8 millimeter socket. And we're going to take out the ABS wire with a 5 millimeter Allen key. And now you're just going to remove the cap. You could take the pliers wiggle it a little bit and it'll come right out. Now we have access to our nut. We're going to use a 13 millimeter socket to remove this nut. Retain hardware for later use. Now we're going to use a 21 millimeter socket to remove the upper ball joint. Knock it loose with the hammer. Now with it loose, I'm going to take my pry bar relieve some of the pressure, and then we're going to be able to take off our nut and then slowly release the upper control arm. Now we're going to remove the lower ball joint with our 24 millimeter socket. And now we can take the hub and the knuckle off the truck. So now taking it off just we're going to use an 18 millimeter socket to remove our sway bar bolt 
Now we're gonna remove the lower strut bolt with a 30 millimeter socket and then a 27 on the other side. Now it's time to remove your strut. You push down. Now with the strut out of the driver's side, we're gonna complete the same steps for the passenger side and remove that strut. We're going to use a 15 millimeter socket to remove the four bolts that are holding the sway bar. Now we can remove the control arms with a 27 and a 21 millimeter socket. And now to remove the drive shaft, we're going to use our 10 millimeter socket. Now with your bolts loose, we can separate the drive shaft.
and you're just going to move it out of the way. Now we're going to remove the cross member under the differential. You're going to use a 15 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter socket. The next step of our instructions was to cut the cross member bracket, but it's going to be a little hard to make an accurate cut, so we're going to remove the differential first. I'm going to use an 18 millimeter socket on the back end, and then we have some other bolts to take off. So before you take out your last bolt, make sure you support your diff so that it's easier to take out. We're going to remove our last 21 millimeter bolt right here. With the diff supported, we're going to take out our last bolt. It's very helpful to have a friend because it is a little awkward to take out. In your instructions are two templates you're going to cut out. We're going to use these for the cross member bracket to trim. With our templates on and marked on our bracket, it's time to take our cutoff wheel and make some cuts. With your cuts made, you can now remove the part of your bracket. With our bracket cut, we're going to place our template back on, line up the holes so that we can mark off our drilling set. So we have a marker for our drill. We're just going to punch, make a mark. And now with your holes marked, you can start your drilling. With our pilot hole drilled, we're going to finish it off with our 5 8 drill bit. So the directions state to put the brackets up first and then the differential. I'm going to put the brackets on first. It's going to be a little bit easier to swing up the diff and bolt it to the truck. You're going to use the supplied bolts, washers, and nuts. Just hand tighten it because we're going to have to adjust everything. Now that you have your brackets on, with the help of a friend, we're going to lift it up. Put 
With our diff in place, we're gonna put our hose back onto the nipple. We're now gonna install the rear cross member with the included hardware and the drop brackets to the stock location. Place the bolt through. For your rear cross member, we're going to put in the stock bolts here and here for our bracket on the other side. So now we're gonna take the two stock flag bolts and we're gonna put them through the frame into our brackets so that they stay in place when we're tightening the differential. Like that, and then we're gonna do it for the other side. And now we can tighten up the differential using an assortment of sockets, um, 21, 22, and 18. Now we're gonna install our front cross member into the location of our stock cross member. We're gonna use our stock bolts and nuts. Now with the front cross member in, we can reinstall the lower control arm. You're gonna use the supplied cam bolts. And then for the passenger side, you're going to do the same thing for the lower control arm. Now you can install your included skid plate. You're going to use the included bolts and the threaded holes on the cross members that we just installed.
And then now we're going to tighten it with a 14 millimeter socket. Now you're ready to tighten up all of your upper cross member bolts with your socket and wrench. And now use your 15 millimeter wrench to snug up these sway bar brackets. Now that everything's tight, we can install our drive shaft spacer. We're going to remove our old bolts because we included longer bolts and we're going to tighten them with an 8mm Allen key. Now you're going to put your spacer and we're going to put our new included bolts through. A good idea is to put a little bit of Loctite on each of the bolts before putting them in. Now with your spacer and your bolts in, we're just gonna move our drive shaft in position and then we're gonna hand tighten it before tightening. So now that we have our bolts hand tightened, we're going to torque them down to 41 foot-pounds. To accommodate our new lift, I'm going to remove the brake line bracket so that we can drop it down with the included bracket. We're going to be using a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to move on to the other side. Now we're going to install the bracket that was included with the stock hardware. Now that we have our bracket installed, we can take our brake line, you're going to move it down, and then we're going to use the included bolt, nut, and washer to attach. And then we're going to do the same steps for the other side. Stock hardware, we're going to install our bracket, and then we're going to pull down on our brake line and install it to the bracket. So you're going to need to pull down on your metal brake line. Just be careful, you just need a little bit of extra slack so that we can get this in here. And then you're just going to make sure that your lines up here are free and you're not going to do any damage. But just like the other side, put this in. So now we have to install our studs into our strut spacer. You're going to use the side with the smaller holes. So you're going to push the stud through the smaller hole, use an enlarged nut, and then we're going to use the right side 17 millimeter nut, and we're going to screw it on top. 
We're gonna tighten it and it's gonna push the stud through and then we're gonna take the nuts off. And then just loosen the nut. And you have a stud. Now that we have our three studs, do the same thing for the other strut spacer. Make sure to hold on to the strut spacer. Now we're gonna take our strut spacer, put it right on top of our strut, and then we're gonna use the stock nuts that we took off secure it to our strut. Then we're gonna take our 14 millimeter, tighten it back up. Same as the other side, spacer on top of strut. Use stock nuts to tighten. And just to be extra sure your nuts are tight, you can put a crowbar in the strut spacer and then use that as some leverage. Make sure everything's nice and tight. Now that our strut is ready, we're gonna put it up into our strut tower. We're gonna use the included lock washers, washers, and nuts. Now with our strut loosely in place, we're gonna lift up on the lower control arm and we're gonna use the stock hardware to bolt up. With your lower strut bolt tightened, it's time to tighten up the top three. And then we're gonna complete the same steps for the other side. So now we're ready to put our sway bar back. We're gonna loosely hang it up and then we're gonna swing it up and tighten it into place. 
you just want to put it right here on there. Loosely put your nut on and let your bar hang. Pop that on and loosely put your stock nut back on. Let it hang. Now with our sway bar hanging, we're gonna push it up onto our bracket and we're gonna use the included nuts, washers, and bolts to hang it up. So we're just gonna push it up into position. Put a bolt through. Washer and a nut. Now with everything in place, you're going to use a 14 millimeter wrench to tighten it up. Okay, move on to the other side. So now we have both knuckles on the table. We're gonna move over the hub from the old one to our new one. And if you notice while they're on the table, this is painted black for corrosion resistance. You see we have a rusty one here, but it's also longer. It's gonna accommodate for our lift. So now, let's get. Our first step is gonna to be to remove these eight millimeter bolts here, and then we're gonna move the 18 millimeter bolts after. Just carefully lift up. Now take your 18 millimeter. Now with our bolts out, we can lift up and separate the hub from the knuckle. If it doesn't separate, you can get a hammer, a chisel, an air chisel, and basically just separate the two pieces. Now we're gonna move it over. Put the bottom part in, reinsert your stock bolts. So you're going to make sure your vacuum fittings at the top and that your gears are aligned. You can move it so that you can make sure everything is good. Just a little adjustment. Place it in and reinstall with our stock bolts. And now we're going to complete the same steps for the other side. Eight millimeter. With your four wheel drive assembly apart, this is a good opportunity to take out any of the rust flakes or any excess dirt that you see in here before you put it back together. Like before, separate. And then this seal around the edge, it's a good idea to clean this up. Just 
So you're gonna to wanna to position your ABS at the top along with the knuckle. And then put your stock bolts through. Position this at the top and get your gears to match up. Now that we have our hub and our knuckle assembled, we're going to install it with the lower ball joint first, then we're going to put our half shaft through, and then our upper ball joint. Push back on the half shaft. Don't damage anything. And now, angle it so you can get your top ball joint in. And then end nut. We're gonna tighten up the upper ball joint. We're just applying some pressure so that the nut will spin. Now you wanna make sure that your axle is fully seated in the hub. When you spin it, you'll see that your axle spins with your wheel hub. So now that it's fully seated, you're gonna put your nut on, you're gonna hand tighten it, and then you're gonna use your ratchet, snug it up. Now that it's tight, we're going to use our torque wrench and we're going to torque it down to 20 foot pounds. You just want to take your pry bar, and then with the click, you know you're torqued. With it torqued, you put your dust shield back on and just tap it home. And now we can reinstall our ABS wire, push that back in, and then we're going to tighten it back up with the stock hardware, which is a 5 millimeter Allen. With the ABS line in, we can now move in our vacuum lines, just match up and push on in. Now we're going to complete all the same steps on the other side. Dust shield back in place. Now we can reinstall our rotor and our brake caliper. We're not going to be utilizing the dust shield that we took off. Placing my rotor on. I'm just leaving a lug nut on here just to keep my rotor in place so it won't. There we go. So now we can take our caliper. We're going to move it onto our rotor.
then we're going to tighten them up with our 21. And now we're going to place this bracket for our brake line back in its stock location with our stock bolts. And we're going to complete all the same steps for the other side. Now we can put our tie rod end into our knuckle. And then we're going to tighten it back up with our 21 millimeter socket. All right, our last step for the front suspension is going to be to plug back in the electronic power steering. We got our top plug, and we have our bottom plug. Push them both in, they snap. Push the clips in. Our front suspension is complete. We have everything torqued down, and now we're ready to go to the rear. Now that we're at the back of our truck, you're going to get it on your jack or on your lift, and then you're going to put some tension on the rear axle with some jack stands. So now that we have pressure on our rear axle, we're going to take our 18 millimeter wrench, a 15 millimeter socket, and we're going to move the shock. Remove that bolt, take this out, and then we're going to complete the same steps on the other side. And with that bolt, both shocks are off our truck. With both of our shocks removed, it's time to remove the brake line assembly bracket, which is located right here. We're going to remove it, and then we're going to install a drop-down bracket, and then install it to that. With our bracket out of the way, we're going to install our new bracket with our stock hardware. Now we're going to install our bracket to our drop bracket. Now you're going to push your bracket down, use the included bolt, washer, and nut to secure. So now we have to relieve some tension on our e-brake cable so that we can remove this bracket so that later down the line on here we can install our new bracket that was supplied by Rough Country. You're going to pull back on your e-brake cable and then I'm going to clamp it right at the edge so that it won't go back. So with slack in the e-brake cable we can move down to the bracket and now we can move it up and separate the two pieces. Push down with the slack and pull out. Now we can take our 10 millimeter socket and remove this bolt. Now we can move that out of the way. And now you're going to take your pliers, apply some pressure so that we can pull this the rest of the way out. And now we have full access to put our new bracket on. So now we have to drill a hole for our new bracket that Rough Country provided. You're going to take a tape measure and you're going to measure one and five eighths from the end so we're going to make a mark about there. And then we're going to make the one and three eighths mark from the bottom. Okay. 
With our spot marked, we're going to now drill with 11 30 seconds drill bit. With our hole drill, we're going to place our bracket up, match up our two holes. You're going to utilize the stock hole first. Use the included bolt, washers, and nut. And then we're going to get our other bolt for the back hole. And now place it through the hole that we drilled. Use your washers and your nut on the other side. And now we're just going to tighten it up. It's a 16 mil for our bigger one. And then our smaller bolt is a 13. Our next step is to remove the U-bolts and place in our new blocks to get our lift. I'm gonna loosen these ones up a little bit so I can fully remove the other side. Now I'm going to drop the jack down on this side of the axle so we can fit in our new block and our new U-bolts. We're going to take our stock block, move it off the leaf spring, place it as our base on the axle. We're going to take our new block, and if you look, you'll see that one end is a little taller. We're going to face that towards the rear of the truck. Place our block in with the higher side to the back and bring the jack back up. With our block in place, it's time to place in our new U-bolts. We're gonna place them right in their old location. And then we're going to use the Rough Country nuts and bolts that were included. Now we can tighten up our U-bolts with our 22 millimeter. We're going to complete the same steps for this other side. Place your block, and again remember, the higher side goes towards the rear of the truck. Few bolts back. Now we're ready to install Rough Country's rear shocks. As you can see, they are a bit longer to accommodate for our new lift, and they're designed to meet or exceed OEM quality, so they're going to provide better control on-road and better comfort when you're going over the trails. So now we're going to place our shock right in the stock location. 
we're gonna use our stock bolts. For the bottom bolt, just push up until you get it into place. And then we're going to take our 15 mil and 18 millimeter socket and tighten this up. And now we're going to complete the same steps for the other side, 15 millimeter wrench, 18 millimeter socket. The rear install is almost complete. Now we just have to reinstall our e-brake cable. We're gonna hook it through our bracket that we installed before and then reconnect it. Pull this back, go through the hole in our bracket, connect. Push this through. And then connect it. We can place our line back in our bracket and through the top hole and then take our 10 millimeter bolt, get through. And then now, all we have to do is relieve the tension on our wrench, and your emergency brake is fully functional. Our Rough Country 4 inch lift kit is almost complete. All that's left is to lower the truck on its wheels so that we can torque our lower control arm bolts. You want to do this because you want to have it in a relaxed state with your truck on its wheels. Now with our wheels and tires, we could get our truck on the ground so we could torque down our lower control arm. So now that our truck's on the ground, we're gonna torque our lower control arm bolts to 200 foot-pounds. With everything torqued, that's gonna wrap up my install. I will mention, if you are doing this at home, it's helpful to have a friend or some mechanical experience. But the kit is worth it. As you can see, we're four inches off the ground, we're leveled, you can fit bigger tires, and you're gonna improve your ground clearance if you're going off-road. If you wanna check this out and more, americantrucks.com.